I've got six meal ideas for you today, perfect for lunch or dinner, and all of them are just seven ingredients. We're gonna keep it really simple for today's video. All of the meals I'm sharing can be made well within 30 minutes. Like I said, seven ingredients only, excluding water, oil, and one or two spices, because I'm assuming most of us have that on hand. The breakdown to all of the recipes can be found on the blog. Links are in the description box below. Now let's dive in. First up, we're gonna make this creamy Thai sweet potato and chickpea green curry. And these are the seven ingredients you're gonna need. We'll first peel and chop one sweet potato. We'll finally chop one red onion and crush two cloves of garlic. To a pot on high heat, add a little bit of oil and the onions, cooking it for a couple minutes, then add the garlic, cook for another minute, and then we'll add two tablespoons of a Thai green curry paste, stirring it in for about 30 seconds. Then we're gonna add in the sweet potato, one jar of cooked chickpeas, one can of coconut milk and about a half a cup to a cup of water. Then bring it to a simmer and cover partially with a lid for 10 or 15 minutes or until the sweet potatoes are soft. At this stage, we can add in a couple handfuls of spinach, stir it in, then remove it from the heat. This curry is delicious if you enjoy it as is, but it's even better when we enjoy it with something like naan or rice. And as with most curries, it's delicious if you enjoy it right away, but even more tasty as the flavors meld. So leftovers of this are incredible. Next up, we're making quick falafel wraps with a roasted garlic mayo. First, we're gonna cut the top off of a head of garlic, place it onto a baking sheet, and drizzle on a bit of oil. We'll also bake some pre-made falafels. Ours were store-bought, but you can do a homemade recipe if you'd like. We have one on the blog. I'll leave that link for you in the description box below. And we're gonna bake these in the oven at 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for about 10 to 15 minutes or until the garlic is golden on top. When the garlic is cooled, we're gonna add four cloves to about a quarter cup of vegan mayonnaise to make what kind of resembles an aioli. We're gonna mash the garlic into the mayo as best we can and then set it aside. We're then gonna slice up a tomato and then we just gotta assemble the wraps. Just add on a generous amount of pre-made or store-bought hummus, the aioli, some lettuce, some tomatoes, and the roasted falafels. If you want to add more ingredients, you can have a field day with this one. Add olives or tabbouleh, cucumber, pickled onions, or beets. The options really are endless and you can take this one with you as a to-go meal or just enjoy it right away. For the next recipe, we're gonna make some pizza. For this, we're using an unbaked flour and cauliflower pizza crust that we found at our local grocery store. We're gonna drizzle on a bit of olive oil, and then we're gonna place on top some roasted garlic. We made it the same way as we showed in the previous recipe. I love roasted garlic, so I added about five cloves in total and mashed it in using the back of a fork. Then we're gonna slice some thin skinned potatoes, slicing it as evenly and thinly as possible so it cooks faster in the oven. Then we're gonna add it to the pizza crust, sprinkle on a couple teaspoons of dried thyme and some salt, bake this in the oven at 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes or until the pizza crust is golden. Meanwhile, we're gonna chop four or five sun-dried tomatoes, about eight to 10 Kalamata olives, and when the pizza is done, we're gonna add these tomatoes and olives to the top. We're then gonna add a couple handfuls of fresh arugula and sprinkle on some roasted pine nuts. This pizza is delicious as is, but I also really love dipping it into some roasted garlic aioli that we made in the previous recipe. It's really so, so, so good. Next, we're making rainbow sushi rolls, my absolute favorite, especially in the spring and summer. First, we're gonna cook some sushi rice according to the package directions. We're then gonna peel and thinly slice a sweet potato. No oil needed, just pop it in the oven at 180 Celsius or 350 Fahrenheit for 10 to 15 minutes or until they're soft, making sure to flip it once halfway. Then we're gonna remove it from the oven and let it cool. And when the rice is done cooking, you can also transfer it to a shallow dish to cool even faster. Now we're gonna start prepping the sushi fillings. We're gonna cut those sweet potatoes into thin strips, then some cucumbers. I was taught to remove the seeds from the middle with a spoon so it's not moist in the sushi, but this is optional. Then we're gonna cut up some mango, or alternatively, you can use some sliced apples instead. We've also got a red bell pepper here, and we're gonna slice up some avocado. Using some nori seaweed sheets, we have a shiny side and a rough side, so we want to place the rough side up. 
Add about half a cup of completely cooled rice, dip a spoon into some water so it doesn't stick to the rice, and using the tip of the spoon, we're gonna spread the rice out evenly over the sheet, leaving about a one inch space on the top. And you still wanna be able to see the seaweed below the rice as you can see here. Then we're gonna add the fillings, a bit of everything along the bottom. And when you're done, we can wet that free space on the top of the seaweed sheet with a bit of water. Using your fingers, hold the fillings firmly in place, pull up the mat to gently roll the sushi, giving it a squeeze, and then continue to roll, pulling the mat up, shuffling, squeezing, until it's completely rolled. And that's it. Repeat to make about four to five rolls, and then cut the sushi using a very sharp knife. The sharper, the better in this case. Then plate your beautiful rainbow rolls, pour yourself a cup of warm tea. Here we sprinkled on some optional sesame seeds for garnish. And that's it. You can enjoy it with some soy sauce, ginger, and or wasabi if that's your thing. Next, we're making a twist on the traditional bacon lettuce tomato sandwich. We're gonna start by cutting about 250 grams of tempeh into thin strips. I cut mine pretty thick, but if you like yours crispier, you wanna cut them thinner. You're gonna add it to a pan with boiling water and let it simmer for about five minutes. This helps to soften the tempeh, removes the bitterness, and helps it to soak the barbecue sauce better. Then we're gonna drain it, pat it dry, and add it to a dish. Cover it with about a quarter cup of barbecue sauce, then give it a flip and repeat this on the other side. And set it aside to marinate for at least five minutes, but the longer the better. You can even prep this the night before for maximum barbecue flavor. Meanwhile, we're gonna toast some bread and de-seed a roasted bell pepper that we got from a jar soaked in water and cut that up. And we'll also thinly slice a tomato. To a nonstick pan on medium heat, add a couple of teaspoons of oil and then the barbecue tempeh. Keep an eye on it so it doesn't burn. And when it's golden and crispy on both sides, remove it from the heat. To make the sandwiches, we're gonna spread some barbecue sauce onto the bread, add some lettuce, the roasted bell peppers, the barbecue tempeh, some tomatoes, and some avocado slices, and that's it. It's a super decadent vegan version of the classic BLT, what we called a BTLT, a barbecue tempeh lettuce and tomato sandwich. Best if it's enjoyed fresh. I call the last recipe a glorified miso soup. It's kind of like a ramen. It takes just five minutes to prep, so it's perfect for those lazy or busy days. The first up, I'm using some whole wheat noodles that take just three minutes to cook. Here I'm adding it to a mason jar for easy transport. We're gonna need half a vegetable bouillon cube, about four small mushrooms, and a green onion thinly sliced. To the jar, we're gonna add two tablespoons of miso paste, the bouillon cube, the mushrooms, onions, and now we're gonna cut a quarter block of tofu into small squares. We're gonna add this to the jar along with a big handful of spinach, and it's ready to go. Some people add the boiling water straight to the jar, but it makes me a bit nervous because the jar can get super hot or might even break, so I'd recommend just adding it all to a bowl when you're ready to enjoy it. All you gotta do is pour some boiling water on top, give it a quick stir so the miso and bouillon cube dissolves, then let it sit for a couple minutes so the noodles soften. I like to then add the spinach at the end, pushing it down under the water, under the noodles, so it starts to soften, and that's it. Here I added some optional sambal hot sauce for some extra spice. And in five minutes prep, five minutes to steep, you've got yourself a big bowl of comforting noodle soup to dig into. I hope you've enjoyed these six recipes that we've shared with you today. Hopefully it gives you some ideas for lunches and dinners you can enjoy throughout the week. If you did enjoy the video, it always helps to support the channel when you give it a thumbs up. And I was thinking that the next recipe video we're gonna do might be five ingredient dessert ideas. So if you have any requests or tips for us, share that in the comments below. See you guys down there. Pickup Lime signing off. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next video.